Welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create your own custom colored milk paint using DIY paint pigments. Sweet Pickens Milk Paint actually has a base with no pigment in it and you can actually create your own custom milk paint color just by using the base and a pigment. Here I'm taking DIY Paints new making powders. This one is Elixir. It's a beautiful bright bright blue pigment and next I'm taking Plant Lady. It's the only green that DIY Paint has created so far. <laughs> so I really wanted a green color and so I put a lot more green in it than the blue. Now whenever you're mixing milk paint, and I'm talking about true milk paint like Sweet Pickens is that comes in powder form, you're gonna wanna use warm water and the ratio is one to one. That's where you wanna start. And I like to use the immersion blender because it really combines all of the pigment and all of the powder and you get limited amounts of chunks. If you feel that it's too thick, add a little bit more water. As the milk paint sits, it gets thicker and so you might have to add more water and stir it as you go. Never wanting to waste any paint, I grab my brush and I try to clean off as much of the paint as I possibly can. And here you get a really good look at the color that I created. I wanted this to be a little bit lighter, so I added the DIY paint making powder in Bright Side. It's a playing game. You're gonna have to play around with the pigment powders and see what color you want to create and how much of each color is going to depend on what you're going after. Immediately just a little bit of that yellow brightened it up a little bit or lightened it up and I liked that color so I went ahead and I went with it. Now milk paint is a lot thinner than DIY paint, chalk style paint, or any other chalk style paint. And so you have to be really careful. And I was in a very confined area because I still have puppies right behind me. You can see the pads on the floor. And then I have my white trunk right in front of me. And I'm consciously aware of all of that, trying not to fling the paint. Your first coat is not gonna be perfect. And so don't worry about perfection. Just get the paint on. Of course, I'm using my Klingon brush here to get a nice, good coverage. Like I said, when you are painting, you might have to add a little bit more water. My paint was a little bit too thick, and so I added a little bit of water, and you can see that it's just gliding on a little bit easier. If there's any chunks, don't worry about it because you'll be able to sand that smooth. I recommend starting with the table or chair upside down, and typically that's what I do, but I was so excited to get started painting with my custom color that I didn't think about it, and then I regretted not doing that but you wanna just make sure that you get it totally covered. In this case, I didn't mind if some of the wood showed because I was doing a layered chippy look, and so it depends on what you're doing. Of course, my dog is running all around getting hair all over the paint and the table and getting it on himself as they always do because they want to be right there by my side. Whenever I'm painting legs, I usually try to go in a side to side motion. And as I'm doing that, I felt something tugging at me. And of course, even the puppies want my attention. They are so, so sweet. We had six mini Australian puppies and we love them so much. And 
we still have as of right now two that are up for adoption anyway back to the table it's starting to dry and you can see there are some chunks on there like like I said I don't worry about that because I will sand that smooth and Remy's right there waiting I just added more of the bright side and then I ended up adding more of the Van Gogh -Go. and I really like this color I painted all of these small items with the leftover green paint as I got to the bottom that picture frame right in front it is more yellow because there was a lot of yellow color in the bottom and I really like all the variations that I got with that green paint right here you can see the difference in the two green colors that I created I just had a little bit left over and so I just slapped it on because I knew that I wanted to be able to distress back and having the two different green colors would work so I just take my sanding sponge and I sand the entire piece smooth next I created a small amount of milk paint using flour sap if you make too much of the milk paint you can seal it and put it in the refrigerator for a couple of days up to a couple of weeks depending on the color and if whether or not you put some bond in it now I did forget to mention that in my green color I did put a splash of bond in that first coat and you only want to do that on your first coat and you don't want to add any bond on your second coat because I'm going for a chippy layered look I didn't paint it completely I let some of the green come through it just makes distressing a little bit easier taking a sanding sponge I go ahead and, and I go over the entire table this not only gives me a butter smooth finish but it also promotes the chipping and if there's any crackling or chipping you want to make sure that you get that really smooth and distress it as much as you want so I went back to see some of the wood I wanted to see some of the green and the different green colors and so you do as much as you want I did take a baby wipe and try to distress a little bit more. Using a baby wipe will promote some more chipping because you're re-wetting the paint and reactivating it. I just wanted to be able to see a little bit more green and get a really, really cool chippy layered look. I just kept going until I was satisfied with the look. Next. Floral Anthology by Iron Orchid Designs. It's a decor transfer and they come in a pad and they have grids on it and you can just cut out what you want, put back what you don't want for the next project and you peel it off of the backing and once you have it exactly where you want it, go ahead and smooth it down. Then you take the applicator that comes with it and you start rubbing it on. It's super easy. I like to use one hand to pull up and one hand to rub down. And it works really, really quickly, especially on smooth surfaces. So if I were using DIY paint with this, I would have to seal this with either liquid patina or DIY Big Top. But with the milk paint, because I wiped it down and it was dust free, I was able to put it right on without top coating it. Then you want to make sure that you burnish it. Because this was a distressed piece, I took my sanding sponge and I distressed it. I took Sweet Pickens Top Coat. It dries to a matte finish and I sealed my entire table with that. Using a liquid top coat to seal in your transfer just provides you assurance that you're gonna have longevity with it. 
and it gives it a really durable finish. Next, I took the 3 inch chip brush by Sweet Pickens Milk Paint and I applied my wax. Now here's my finished piece. I love the way that it turned out. Chippy goodness, layered goodness. Only milk paint can produce this authentic look and I love it. It's smooth to the touch and it's so, so pretty. It's available at my store. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to comment below and let me know. I would love to hear your comments about milk paint or any questions. If you're local, come and check it out. 575 McCoy Avenue in Madisonville, Kentucky. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time.